the prospecting stage. There was a little bit of confusion going on this morning, which was not my fault. <laughs> and you got to remember, it's never my fault, but it really wasn't. So we're here to learn about the business. We've got some incredible leaders that are going to teach us all about the tips to prospecting, to business building, and to how to make your business stronger to become a better entrepreneur. Now, couple things. Number one, did somebody leave an iPhone in here from the last session? Is anyone missing an iPhone? Check your pockets, check your seats. I have an iPhone. If you can describe the case, I will know it's yours. I'm not going to show you because I want you to describe the case to me so I know it's yours. It's got four corners. It's got four corners. There is a case. Okay, so let's get started. Let's not let's not wait any longer. We've got some great, great people here that are going to teach us a lot today. So. Our first speaker, this is a guy I've known now just a little bit over a year. And he is as genuine and honest as the day is long. Just a, a good human being. And he had one of the most unthinkable experiences happen to him by way of his former company no longer existing and him having nothing. He's literally had to start over from scratch because this company went out of business. He had built a multi, multi-million dollar business. He had years where he made millions of dollars in this industry. He's a proven leader. He has amazing leadership skills. This guy has coached football for over 10 years, won a state championship. And I don't know how many of you know, I played football in high school, and I remember how much time it takes to coach something like high school football. It's an enormous undertaking. Hours and hours and hours of time and effort that you put into teaching young children, uh, young boys how to be men, how to be teammates, how to be great people. And this guy is an epitome of that. And you're gonna have a chance to, to learn from him today. So get out your note takers, get out your pens and pencils, and take some great notes. Because this guy is here, he's a wonderful teacher, and he's an even better human being. So with that, please welcome, give a big loud cheer for Mr. Todd Rollins. Well, good morning to everybody. We're gonna talk this morning about a paradigm shift. Does everybody know what a paradigm shift is? It's kind of when, for a long period of time, people think a certain way is the only way, and then all of a sudden, usually because of a singular person discovering something, and then others finding out, and then the compounding of word of mouth or whatever, all of a sudden, what people believe sometimes for thousands of years isn't the truth anymore. There's a new bunch of proof. An example would be, for most of the history of mankind, if you do the research, Everybody thought the earth was flat. Turned out, just a few hundred years ago, what was it? Round. Let's look at a couple others. For many, many years, they built boats from wood. Who knows why they built boats from wood? Because they, the wood floated, they thought it was the only floating substance. What some scientists later found out is anything would float as long as it displaced the water that it was on. So now when they build a ship scene, could you imagine one of our big warships headed over to Iraq right now that was made of wood? With cannons on it? No, things have changed a little bit. Up until 1903, everybody thought uh, that the only way you were going to fly was to be a bird. And then all of a sudden we found out we could fly in these little two-seater airplanes. Now all of a sudden we're flying overseas in thousand-seat airplanes. Well, guys, what I'm going to submit to you is that there is a paradigm shift going on right now. Here's the paradigm shift. People are discovering that showing up and working at a job, trading time for money, isn't working like our grandparents thought it would and the generations before them. Does anybody know what the great American trap is? The great American trap, whether you're a doctor, dentist, uh, minimum wage worker, whatever it is that you do, you build your life around the income that you're making. Your house, your cars, your credit cards. And when you are maxed out on time you can trade for money, 
I call it the great American trap. You're stuck for life. You know how many doctors live paycheck to paycheck? How many top lawyers in your city that, quote, have this prestigious name? That you think, man, they're awesome. Look at their house. Look at their cars. They go to, more, they go to bed at night with more stress than people that work at McDonald's because they're in the great American trap. There's no more time left to trade for money. There's really no way to break out of the great American trap without some type of leverage in residual income. So what we're going to talk about real quick is the normal job. When you show up at that normal job, let's just say you're a doctor. I see 10 patients during the day. I get paid for 10 patients. So if I'm a doctor, how do I increase income? See, more see 11, 12 patients. So all of a sudden, I'm seeing 30 patients a day. I get a new house and a new car. And all of a sudden, I'll do paycheck to paycheck again. What do I do? I have to now raise it to 33, 34 patients. All of a sudden, I'm max. It doesn't matter if you're a personal trainer. It always works out that way. Look at this right here. The other part of trading time for money is called linear income, meaning you only get paid, we get paid different levels of income. Obviously, a postal worker and a lawyer is compensated very differently for their time, but it's still only time. And what happens when we work for these linear income jobs, whether you're fired, laid off, your small business shuts down, downsized, whatever reason it is, no longer able to work due to health issues, if you're working for linear income, you can see the line there, the second you stop trading time is bam. You go, does anybody ever had that happen in a job before? Where you're making X amount of dollars and then bam? I'm going to tell you, I had it happen in this industry. I've seen a paycheck go from $200,000 a month to zero in one month. So what I'm going to submit to you about the network marketing industry is I'm going to tell you how to make residual income, but if your company's not built to last, then residual income's not residual income. So I'll tell you the number one reason I'm a part of RX is I saw a company that would be here 50 years from now if we went and built the residual income to leverage into it. But what we're going to do here is talk just for a minute about doing something one time and then getting paid for it from now on. As an example, my next door neighbors hate nutrition. They don't want to lose weight. I spend three or four or five, six weeks with small conversations. All of a sudden they're like, I got nothing to lose. I'll try those stupid drops. They put them in for tongue. They lose five pounds their first week. I'm like, how did that just work? I don't know, but you know, you may be needing a little detox now. Why don't you try this restore it? All of a sudden, it's been life head three, four, five months. They've lost 40 pounds. They want to get their products for free. They start sharing with other people. And boom, you've got residual income. You may move, but that customer that started using your drops and, and nutrition, although it may take you a month to get them on it, may be using it for years and years to come. It's called residual income. So when you stop working, although it's this, here's the gold rule residual income and linear income requires the same work. Hey, there's no difference in that part of it. But I want to say it's very foolish if the work is the same to put my time into something that would only pay me once when I can put the same amount of effort and time into something that would continue paying me from now on. You see the second graph there? When you stop working in this industry, income continues skyrocketing. Okay? It's like building retirement in three, four, five, six years. What man has discovered, here's your paradigm shift. What man has discovered is the power of residual income, but network marketing direct sales, RX particularly, what it allows is for you to build leverage. So you actually have two things going on. There's a, anybody ever heard of John Paul Getty? Many of you have heard this quote, but John Paul Getty was one of his most famous quotes was, I would rather have 100, 100 people giving me 1% effort than 100% effort of my own. So network marketing merges two things together that are genius. A, an income stream, as you build it, continues working when you stop building it. But secondly, and this is the genius part, and some of you have experienced this before, some of you haven't. When you start building a business here, you show somebody, you show somebody, you show somebody, they all quit. You show somebody else, you show somebody, they all quit. You show somebody, you show somebody. This shows a Ken Bailey. The guy put 70,000 people in an organization over the next 10 years. So all of a sudden, the right combination, that pink, how many people um, are in your business now because of uh, that one gentleman there in China? 7,000? 7, yeah, so Ping signed up a really neat business owner in China and 7,000 distribution units later. I, it, it, if you've never experienced, you're like, oh, that's Ping, oh, that's Ping. Uh, if you do the process, which I'm going to end this telling you the process, all of a sudden you show somebody, you show somebody, and the compound effect takes place. And I'm going to show you what happened in our life. That's the, 
The stadium there where USC and Michigan were playing, and I believe that's the one out in USC, which means it seats about 100,000. I was a football coach in a town called Fort Smith, Arkansas. Riley hit it on the head. We had won the 5A state championship, which was the biggest classification in that state. Won it actually back to back. Loved it. It was my passion. If you had asked me, I would have ever done anything else in my life, I would have said you were crazy. But something happened. Some of you may have experienced it. My wife and I had four children. We had a commitment for her to be a stay-at-home mom. And when you keep a wife on with four children, it becomes an impossibility to keep up financially as a high school football coach in the state of Arkansas because winning at the high school level doesn't dictate income. It's one of those, I didn't understand it back then, but uh, whether you're good or bad, in that profession really has nothing to do with income. It's another year served, all those good kind of things, another degree earned, uh, which is another story. I could go on forever. I went and got a master's degree while I was teaching. I didn't even teach in the classroom. The only reason I got the degree was to increase income. But when I finished the degree, it was like a $240 student loan, and my raise was like $270. So I was profiting $30 a month. Um, my six month in network marketing part time, I had a check paid off the student loan in one month. But here's how we entered the industry. My dad uh, was a CPA in Memphis and I went home to visit him and he paid my way in a company. He'd never been in the industry to hear high, but one of his clients had brought it to him. And I went home, really, my dad told us, we hold things over your head, you might got one of those dads. <laughs> so I was like, I at least got to make enough money to give this guy his money back. And I just started showing it to a few people. Everybody said no, but I didn't. I didn't really know anything about the network marketing industry, so I was too dumb to quit at that point. So I just showed a few more and showed a few more, and boom, it started catching. And we made about $6,000 in our fifth or sixth month, and it began to snowball there. But by our 11th year, we had more than two of those stadiums in our organization. So what I want you to understand is, how would you like to spend life for a decade and have two of those stadiums selling those products in your organization? I mean, that's, that's a rhetorical yes question. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a life-changing thing. It, it, will, it will not just change your life, but it will change your kid's life and their kid's life. Well, here's how you do it. It's really a very, very simple process. And the model really never changes. The first thing you're going to want to do is take the product. Chris Dole, he's been around this industry for a long time, and every time he says this, I just cringe in my skin. But Chris always says, I didn't take the products when I first joined RX. I joined for the business only. Okay? The reason I cringe in my skin is, is because the thing that will send your business flying is to lose 10 pounds and let somebody say, what are you doing? Who's had that happen to them? Who in here joined this business? I'm sorry. Who in here bought a product that said you would never join the business and you're at this convention? Raise your hand. About half the room. About half the room. So I start on the product. I get a, something that makes a difference in my life, improved energy, start losing weight, better skin complexion, whatever it is. People start noticing, and here's the key thing. This is the secret to all of network marketing. You start sharing. How do you share it? Verbally. When you're around people, you don't keep it to yourself. You just bring it into conversation. Social media, you put it out on Facebook. Who in here has signed up a rep in your business because of a before and after picture on Facebook. Over half the run. Just post pictures on the Facebook. You don't have to be a good Facebook person. Just post a picture. Okay? Get your daughter or son or somebody that knows what they're doing. Say, like, post a before and after picture of me and, and put something on there. And then the other thing, this is the, this is the part that will explode a business. Who would like to have a business that's putting in a couple of thousand new reps a month? <laughs> you will never do that in what I call the cold market. Meaning, you're passing out postcards, putting things on social media. That's where you get a start. That's where you get some people signed up. But if you would like to create wealth, the second you get a few people to work with, what you've got to learn how to do is become knowledgeable and drive into their warm market. People, see, if you can do this solely by social media and the internet, why would Rx pay us? Think about that. So if they can do what I think I can do, build a whole business just with social media, why would they give me a cut? Because they know they can't build it that way. They need word of mouth marketing. That's the way the whole world works. That's what makes it explosive. So I get my, I start getting ones and twosies through those areas, through just opening my mouth to friends, social media. But once I get them, my game plan is really simple. 
Get them started on the product. Get them developing the story. You'll want to make a little slideshow of all the before and after pictures you can get your hands on. You can sign up the world without a word or a number. If you just had a book of about 30 before and after pictures, and just flip through it. Just flip through it. It is amazing how the emotional attachment to seeing people change their life attracts people because everybody wants to do that. So they see that, you start sharing, and then when I get, uh, let's, let's just use Bill. Where did Bill go? Bill signs up in the business, or Carrie, or Mike. When they sign up, I'm going to say, listen, let's make a game plan and go to work together. Here's what I want you to do. Start the products. I want you to make a list of people that you know that might be interested in using these products with you or might want to create a little bit of extra income. And when you get that list made, here's what I want you to do. I want the top four, five, or six people that you have the most credibility with, that like you the most, that just won't turn you down for anything. I just want you to invite them over to your living room. Tell them you're going to have them. And you can do it either way. You can invite them for a business, or you can invite them just for product and weight loss. Whatever is your comfort zone, that part does not matter. But as a presenter or as the upline, you've got to know what audience you're talking to. So if I've got a room of people that have been invited there strictly for weight loss, as a presenter, you've got to go in and present for that crowd. You can't get off track. And at the very end, I'll tell you how I end after I present to a crowd that only wants for weight loss. After the presentation of the weight loss, the system, how to get done is over, we will show the clinical path. We'll tell each person they can buy the products individually or you can get it all inclusive of the clinical trap. As a matter of fact, I picked this up from Shannon. I'm always picking up. A great football coach only becomes a great football coach because he finds what all the winners are doing and implements it. And after they give credit once, they make it their own. So same thing in here. Eventually, Shannon, I'll forget to give you credit. I got this from Shannon. The, the clinical trial pack is $379, but the member pack is only $399. So here's how I make the changeover for a non-business oriented group. I'll say, listen. For 20 bucks more, you can have a distributorship and buy the products through yourself and be able to earn a little bit of income back. But most importantly, we've got a little system set up that if you'll just get a few other people using the, the, the drops with you or our product with you, then you'll make enough money here to pay for yours. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you can get a group of people making enough money to pay for their own product, there's no more convincing of the business needed. From that point, just let their story develop, let them get a paycheck, let them refer a few people. You don't need to tell them how to put them in the system. You put them in the system the same way. Let that paycheck flow, and they're going to be asking you, now, how did I just get this $50 check? How did I just get this $101 check? And then you can move on to the next level where you set up their living room meeting. And then the, the last part of the equation, and this is the magic. The business is always built on other people's time. Who was too busy to do this? Who's ever heard the excuse, I don't have the time? Okay, I've traveled to every state, every city, nowhere I've ever been. I've spent years in Utah, California, Tennessee, the South, New York City, as big businesses up in Manhattan. And I found out it didn't matter if I was in Manhattan or the smallest town in Alabama, the excuses are identical. And what really amazed me is every area always thought their area was different. I mean, it almost became, I can almost tell a person, I can, it's not almost, I can tell you what you're going to say to me before you say it. Because I've heard it so many times. So, and now that I'm dealing with multiple cultures, I'm finding out. It's, it, see, here's the neat thing. We here in the United States say, what is China doing? See, I used to hear that when people were exploding in North Carolina. They say, well, what is California doing? Or what is what? Uh, it all revolves around a singular leader. So I, my opinion is if China is exploding, they have better leadership than the U.S. Because that's what makes it all grow. But going back to the excuses, nobody has time. So what I want to do is take it to them on their own time. That's the genius of Facebook. You can kind of put little things out there. And when you put it out there, then they're going to kind of contact you. And then, hey, I'll just meet you for lunch tomorrow. Just show up with those bottles of drops and a little flip chart. Show them. And then I'll end because I'm running down to the two-minute warning. The conference calls, if you don't run a conference call for your team, find some that are going on. But the most important thing is everybody joins your business with limited commitment. And it's your job to grow their commitment and belief level by getting them on conference calls. Create some type of infrastructure. If you have a local business going, as a matter of fact, I will tell you, you'll never explode into momentum without a local market of a weekly meeting with energy where people can show up tired, I don't want to go, I just, oh, God, why am I going to go to this meeting? But they walk in, they hear three incredible testimonies in front of the room, they hear this one lady that's got the same story they've got, they just made a $400 paycheck, and bang, they take off. If there wasn't a local meeting for that to happen, can 
can never go. Because those people will fall off, they'll die. It'll, the local meeting, especially if it's weekly, will increase retention rate by a thousand fold. And then always push toward a, whether you do a bi-Saturday, bi-weekly training or a once a month training in your area. Uh, Duke and I have very similar philosophies because I was asking how he did things it was identical. I always got people in with very limited information and then brought them into a training and up their belief level. So don't overwhelm people in the beginning. Start small, train, and then you guys, I commend you as we end this. You've done the singular thing that will more than likely change your life forever. You showed up at a big event. I've said for many years, for every person on your team, you get to a big event, your team will grow by a minimum of 200 people the next year for that. Each person that you get to the big event. So this year, your team's going to grow by 200. Next year, you want to have hundreds of people on your team, put the multiplier effect to it, and have a couple of stadiums multiple, uh, delivering these products around the country.